<laughs> oh, hey everyone. This video is about the HP 71B Pocket Computer from 1984. And a lot of people have requested I make a video about the 71B because it's seen by many as the Rolls Royce of Pocket Computers. And the story behind the 71B is fascinating. Uh, because in 1979, HP had uh, released the wildly popular 41C, and just a year later, in 1980, uh, Sharp released the PC1210, which really pioneered the form factor that we now term a pocket computer. And by that, um, I mean a handheld device with a QWERTY keyboard, uh, usually supporting the basic programming language. <laughs> and Sharp, Sharp's successor device, uh, the PC1210, one was sold by Radio Shack in the US as a TRS-80 uh, for $250. And of course in the early 80s the personal computing revolution was in full swing. So Steve Wozniak, who had famously worked as an intern in HP's calculator division, had already left to start Apple Computer earlier in 1976. And HP had uh, brought out the Series 80, a set of small desktop computers uh, in 1980. And of course, the IBM PC was first released in 1981. And HP had set up two teams to work on parallel portable computer projects. And uh, although it wasn't the intention, uh, they ended up effectively competing with each other in the market. Uh, one team was sponsored by HP Labs and worked on a product that was codenamed Kangaroo. And Kangaroo was designed to be a smaller version of the HP 85 desktop computer. And so it was to be used primarily as a platform for program development and business apps, and not explicitly as a calculator. A Kangaroo was released in 1982 as the HP 75, HP's first pocket computer. And it has a lot of hardware built in, uh, such as an HP IL port and a card reader. And when it was released, it cost around $1,000, a really large amount of money for the time. Uh, but the second team, which was part of the calculator division, worked on a project uh, codenamed Titan. <clears throat> and Titan was originally designed to be a more powerful replacement for the 41. Uh, and it was originally called the HP 44, as you can see in this early uh, prototype here. And although it used technology from the 75, such as HPIL and uh, some of the implementation of BASIC, it was designed to anticipate the availability of larger and lower cost memory and denser integrated circuit technology. And so Titan was released two years later than the 75C in 1984 as the 71B. And at launch, it was $500, uh, roughly equivalent to $1,400 now. And so though it was a lot cheaper than the 75C, it was still uh, really expensive uh, compared to, say, the 41C, but especially compared to most scientific calculators of the time. And the 71B was an ambitious device that pioneered a lot of new approaches for HP. It was the first HP handheld to support an algebraic calculator mode rather than RPN, uh, but it implemented it in a really unique and interesting way. It was also uh, the first to use the new 4-bit uh, Saturn chip that went on to power HP's Pioneer series of calculators, as well as the early RPN, uh, RPL models. And it was also the first handheld to implement uh, the planned IEEE 8 uh, 54 floating point standard uh, and it was also the first HP device to be designed as an open machine uh, in a similar fashion to the IBM PC to make it easier for others to do customization and expansion and the HP uh, 71B was really intended as a useful tool uh, for the technical professional uh, by combining the functionality of a scientific calculator uh, with a programmable computer. And physically, the 71B is impressive for its time. It's 19 by 9 centimetres, which is a little bit larger than most Japanese pocket computers, but it's fairly light at 300 grams. And the 71B was designed for extensibility. Uh, it has four ports uh, on its front. Uh, for RAM and ROM modules, and there are a number of ROMs available, although not as many as the 41 series. Uh, there was a ROMs for finance, circuit analysis, a text editor, curve fit, um, a math module, and a fourth and assembler ROM. 
and those might be topics for future videos. There's also uh, one port on uh, the right side uh, for a card reader and on the left uh, for the HPIL interface. And uh, via HPIL, um, the 71B could interface with a large set of peripherals. Uh, the display is 132 by 8 pixels and it can display 22 characters in a 96 character virtual line. And the small size of the display is an interesting uh, choice in retrospect uh, since it's fairly constraining. Um, the 75C had used a longer single line display with 32 characters and Casio had brought out the PB7000 in Japan a year earlier with a 4 row 20 column LCD. Uh, but the 71B's display is really highly readable and the contrast is adjustable via the software contrast command. Uh, but the keyboard on the 71B is really excellent. Uh, the injection molded keycaps are separated from the underlying uh, key contacts by an elast uh, elastomer membrane, which makes the keys uh, really tactile. And the keyboard design is very elegant and separated into a QWERTY uh, and numeric sections. And although the keyboard supports uh, two shift keys, a gold and a blue, uh, the keyboard doesn't look busy. And this is partly because all of the keys, apart from the on key, uh, are chamfered. And uh, the blue shift labels are written on the sloping faces. And interestingly, uh, the unlike the 75C, uh, the rows of QWERTY keys uh, all lined up into vertical columns and not staggered like a traditional QWERTY keyboard. And the 71B, like the HP 41, supports a full a user keyboard mode and associated keyboard overlays that allow all keys uh, to be redefined. Uh, if we flip over to the back, we can see that uh, this is um, the second uh, version of the housing that was released with a plastic uh, backplate rather than a metal one. Uh, on the back, you can see uh, four feet to stop. The device slipping and there's also a door for the battery compartment uh, which takes uh, four triple a batteries and the 71b supports two main modes calc mode and basic mode and we can switch to calc mode using the gold shift key and the comma and calc mode works using algebraic notation to match the format of basic but it doesn't always display the entire expression that's typed. Instead it uses a novel method called operator precedence parser with value substitution or OPVS. And this was developed and patented by HP Stephen T. Abel and allows intermediate results to be displayed as you progress through the calculation. And so if we enter uh, an expression uh, we can see that terms are uh, evaluated as we type. And there are a few benefits of this. Uh, the first is that showing intermediate results gives the user confidence in the final answer, uh, similar to RPN. Uh, but it still allows algebraic expressions to be entered in the way they're printed in books or written by hand or taught in school. It also saves precious re re uh, screen real estate on the 71B. And the nice thing about the 71B is you can use uh, the CALC's command stack uh, and, and hit up uh, to see the full um, expression that was typed. And as well as showing intermediate results, 71B also has delimiter anticipation. Uh, so say we enter an open uh, bracket, uh, calc mode enters a closed bracket uh, to match, and so mismaths parentheses can't happen in calc mode. Uh, and calc mode supports scientific operations using function call syntax. Uh, so, for example, uh, we can uh, add, uh, say, sine of 45. And uh, calc mode knows how many arguments a function takes and inserts the right amount of commas. So, say if we type in min uh, and then open bracket, uh, we can see a comma uh, which indicates that min takes two arguments. And OPVS also supports implied results. So if we run a function uh, with no arguments, uh, the last result will be passed in. 
Uh, so let's run sign again uh, with no arguments. And it's kind of like RPN. Uh, and I, as I said, HP filed a patent for OPEVS, which explains why it's not used by other calculator manufacturers. And I'll include a link to the patent in the show description. Uh, OPEVS was used um, by later HP calculators such as the Excellent 27S, which I have a separate video on. Uh, and there's even a form of it used in the modern 17B2+, although that calculator strangely ignores operator precedence. A uh, calc mode on the 71B also supports uh, undo via the back key, uh, which is useful um, if you uh, make a mistake. And um, it um, also supports user-defined functions or UDFs. Uh, and these need to be defined in a separate BASIC file. And um, I'll talk about BASIC in a moment. Uh, but here's an example of a uh, simple user-defined function uh, to calculate the full distance equation, uh, the distance an object falls under gravity in time t. And the syntax is um, def fn uh, followed by the function name and its arguments. And so uh, we can switch back uh, to calc mode and uh, we can use that user-defined function and pass in an argument, say, five seconds. And so calc mode on the 71B is really remarkable, and a lot of it is attributable to the genius of Stephen T. Abel, and so it's really interesting uh, to read his thoughts about the 71B overall. I'll talk more about those later. And the 71B has a file system for storing programs and data in RAM and ROM, and memory can be divided into ports, with port 0 being the main RAM module. And the 71B supports a bunch of different file types, so if I type uh, cat all, uh, I can page through uh, my files. So there's a work file uh, which is intended for temporary data. Um, I have the MakeLex uh, program for creating language extension files, and I'll talk more about those later. Um, I've got one Lex file, uh, and also a basic file for solving in Queens. And so to view a basic file, we can just uh, type edit in the file name. And we can use the uh, arrow keys to page through the lines of code. And the 71B features one of the best basic dialects on any pocket computer, so let's talk more about that now. So let's look at my code to the in Queens chess problem, and in Queens is a search problem where we're looking for ways to put queens on a chessboard so that no two queens attack each other. Uh, so for example, this is a solution for uh, four queens, uh, where we've got queens on uh, ranks 2, 4, 1, and 3. And with 71B Basic, it's uniquely easy to write a solution uh, since it supports recursive functions. And so I won't go into this code line by line, uh, but I will point out some of the more interesting features of 71B Basic. <clears throat> so the code starts by declaring um, in the size of the chessboard, and it can use this to dynamically allocate the integer array to store uh, the, the file locations of the queens. Um, you'll notice that in a lot of places you can see the at character, and this is just a statement separator in 71B Basic. Uh, the program defines two functions and one subroutine, and the core <coughs> recursive search function is called S, um, so def, fn, s, and user-defined functions on the 71B can only have a, sing a uh, letter uh, and a number for their name. And so the pro um, program calls this function with the parameter n and the files and ranks to start searching for a solution on. And so S starts by uh, calling out the display board procedure uh, to print out the board state. <clears throat> and it does this, uh, jumps to uh, the, the subroutine here. And <clears throat> next, this is a terminate uh, condition and uh, next to for loop, uh, which places a queen on the board on each of the files. And for each uh, placement, it calls the A function uh, to determine whether there's any um, attackers for the uh, queen that's just been placed. And if there's no attackers, uh, S calls itself recursively, uh, looking at the next rank. 
So let's run uh, the program now. Uh, and we can see that the code is doing a recursive search of uh, queen placements and it will backtrack when it can't find a solution. Uh, it takes about 11 seconds uh, to find the first solution for uh, four queens, uh, four, eight queens. Um, the same code takes about four and a half minutes, which is not um, dissimilar to a keystroke program on a Saturn based calculator such as the 32S. And so 71B Basic has a lot of nice features. Um, it comes with more than 240 keywords. You can pass parameters by value and reference. Uh, it supports two-dimensional matrices, and it has uh, programmable timers, which are useful for controlling external devices. Uh, but probably the biggest feature it lacks um, is long variable names, and some other pocket computers, such as the TI-74, supported those a few years later. And the, the lack of long variable and function names does make 71B code sometimes difficult to read. But for me, the most interesting feature of 71B Basic is the Lex files, and these stand for language extensions, and there are assembler functions that um, allow new keywords to be added to the basic programming language, either statements or functions. And the way they work is that the 71B automatically loads any Lex files uh, that are in memory on startup. And so I've used the Make Lex Basic program uh, to enter a simple Lex file called RevLex, uh, which adds a function to reverse a strings by order. And uh, I'll link to the um, Saturn assembler code for those who are interested. Uh, and so because we have RevLex in memory, um, we can just call uh, the Rev function and pass it a string. Yeah, and so um, Lex files are a really uh, powerful feature for the 71B, and I'll include a link in the show description to uh, Holy Joe's site, uh, which includes a lot of uh, useful Lex files and utilities. So in summary, the 71B is a fascinating and powerful device, and I haven't even covered HPIL and the math in fourth and assembler ROMs um, that really add in extra dimensions to the platform. Uh, but the sad reality uh, was that commercially the 71B wasn't very successful, and like I mentioned earlier, HP Stephen Abel, um, in a fascinating Usenet post, which again I'll link to below, was very critical of some of the core product design decisions. Um, in his view, the marketing department had insisted on support for algebraic entry and the focus on the basic programming language, and their rationale was really to try to appeal to the same home uh, consumer market Tandy targeted with the TRS-80 pocket computer. Uh, but of course, due to the 71B's high price, um, that market never eventuated. Another aspect um, that the 71B is often criticised for is its small screen size, and um, again, this was similar to the TRS-80 pocket computer, and it's hard to know really how much of this was um, a legitimate design mistake, or really more a function of cost-cutting, or the year um, the 71B was conceived. Um, but even with its flaws, uh, the 71B is still a beautiful and brilliant device. Um, it objectively has one of the best basic implementations, um, extensibility and keyboard of any pocket computer, um, even ones released decades later. And calc mode is also extremely innovative and powerful and makes the 71B a really uh, great calculator experience. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And have you, if you have, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.